here uh, before dealing with the new material i want just to refresh your information of course you studied with dr lihav in the first course something about approach something about method something about technique so who can tell me what does this mean when we talk about approach what does this mean to you who can remember who can tell me How can we define approach? Do you have an idea about these things or not just tell me? Yes, Victor. Yes, uh, Mohammed. Can you tell me what, what is the meaning of approach? Uh, Victor, <clears throat> how do you remember the meaning of remember? approach? But hey, I will... Yes, yes. Uh, yes Victor. The way... Uh, how can uh, dealing with the students and uh, teaching them or uh, uh, how can you use uh, uh, different methods in order to to uh, to reach uh, the uh, let me say uh, the exact uh, the exact uh, uh, yes uh, the exact material or oh, in, okay. in very oh. elaborate uh, clear way oh, okay. to them actually oh. Oh, okay Okay, very good. Who else? Who else? Any other information about approach, method, technique? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Tell me. Yes, Beda. Yes, yes. we we can uh, we can say the approach uh, is uh, wider uh, from the method, very and good. we can uh, say that the uh, the method is just uh, a part of the uh, approach. Very good. What else? It means it means that uh, it means that uh, the approach uh, has uh, uh, over over cover uh, of the material uh, rather than the method. <clears throat> very good, very good. Who else? Yes. Who can tell us more about approach, method, technique? Any information that you have? Any information that you remember? Okay. Now, uh, let us discuss them scientifically. Okay, with these things, we are going to see uh, 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 these, uh, let me say, headings. We are going to uh, have an idea about these things. We have approach. You can see now uh, these things, approach, method, and technique. If we come to approach, approach, as you said, is wider than the, follow, uh, the, the following terms. Approach, what does it mean? It means a number of assumptions and principles. What do you mean? Approach is something theoretical. That is, we are talking about the principles. You know principles. Certain, certain uh, 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 theoretical points to be given. So uh, these, these are what we call approach. And with approach, from where we got to the principles? Principles that are coming from theories. Theories of what? Theories of language and theories of psychology. Why the theories of language? Because we are talking about teaching a language. Why psychology? Because we are behind a learner, and a learner is a human being. And the science that deals with the psychology of human being is psychology. So here, the principles from language and the principles from psychology are coming together to form the approach. Is it clear or not? Just tell me. Any question about yes. this? I'm going to repeat it once again. The approach is a number of principles, uh, theoretical factors, theoretical factors, assumptions, okay, that are coming from what? Two sciences, linguistics and psychology. They are coming together to form the approach. Why? Because we are talking about teaching a language, and that's why we need for the, uh, the theoretical uh, uh, part of linguistics and we have something about psychology because we are dealing of learners and learners are human beings and that's why we need studies from psychology 
and these principles are coming together to make the approach. Clear up to this point? Any question? Because I'm going to ask you later about these things. And of course, the lecture is recorded. You can listen to me once again if you, if you didn't catch up uh, now. Now, we move to the method. Method is what? Number of practices and application. You see now, if we compare, uh, uh, approach is something purely theoretical, while method is what is something practical. What is the difference here? Here, these principles, we are going to find their own application in teaching situation. What does this mean? It means that we have to decide the role of the teacher, what the teacher can do. The role of students, what, what students can do. And then the role of the material, how can we design the material? That is what the textbook that we are going to teach for our students. So all these, all these things are applications, practices, something to be done rather than theoretical principles. Clear up to, this, uh, up to this point or shall I repeat? Please. This is clear. Shall I repeat? Yes. We are going to have the method. What is the method? The method is purely practical. What does it mean practical? It means that we have certain applications related to the teacher's role in the class in relation to uh, the, uh, the, the method that we are going to teach. Of course, we are going to what? To have something in general. We are not going to specify certain method now. This is something general. Any method that we apply. When we apply a method, we are going to decide the teacher's role, the student's role, and the role of the material to be taught. This is, this is about the method, as to be compared with the approach. Approach is something theoretical, method is something practical. Clear up to this point? Okay, we move to technique. What is the te technique? Technique is the teacher immediate device at a given class. What does it mean? It means that technique is related only to the teacher. What can the teacher do each lesson? And by the way, here we are talking about what? We are talking about the role of the teacher at schools, and this is very important. When we talk about a teacher's role at school, what does it mean? It means that we have a lesson. We don't have a lecture. We have a lesson. Who can tell me, uh, what is the difference between a lesson and a lecture? Who can tell me? Is there any idea about the difference between a lesson and a lecture? Fatima Zahra, you have something? Fatima Zahra? No, no, sir. Okay. Beida, you have something? What is the difference between yes. a lesson and a lecture? Uh, the lesson we can say the teacher uh, the teacher uh, uh, the, the teacher uh, studies uh, the student uh, 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 the lesson uh, depend only the teacher while the lecture there is a share between the uh, uh, the lecture uh, himself and the student uh, no here if we are going to say just the opposite the lesson we have we have different roles that are related to teacher and different roles that are related to students a lesson we have number of activities and this is very important in a lesson we have activities in a lecture we don't have activities a lecture means that uh, a material to be given by the teacher and the teacher uh, is doing everything and uh, students are listening only. That is what a lecture. While a lesson, no, we have number of activities, 
number of activities that are done together between the teacher and students and that's why we have uh, we call we call uh, uh, school lesson here uh, at a uh, school level we have a lesson while for example at university we have a lecture so uh, at a school level we have a lesson and a lesson is a different uh, uh, i mean a number of different activities that are done together between the teacher and the students and briefly speaking a lesson is to be considered in what in a school level only school level only not at a university level we don't have a lesson in a university we have a lecture while in schools we have a lesson why because lessons means we have different activities activities to be done by the teacher and students clear now here if we back uh, once again to the technique that is related to the teacher uh, to be done in uh, in a class and want to say immediate what does it mean it means that these techniques will be different uh, in accordance with the different lessons for example lesson one we have different activities that are different from what lesson two so uh, why why to say immediate it, it means that what the lesson requires in a specific time we don't have one technique in all lessons, no. We have a single technique or a number of techniques in a given lesson. In lesson one, we have different techniques that are, uh, that are not the same of lesson two. And when we say device, what does it mean device? Teachers, immediate device, that is what? The technique is related to the teacher. Uh, and here, when we are, uh, we are talking about device, it means the way. The way that the, the teacher can uh, present an activity in a class. Of course, when we talk about this, it is not clear. But when we have a lesson and we have different activities, what are these activities? For example, pronunciation, grammar passage uh, paragraph writing these are these are different activities and each activity needs a number of techniques these techniques are the ways that the teacher represent the activity in the pronunciation for example what can the teacher do to make students train on certain pronunciation on certain sounds in a grammar what are the items to be given to students and in which way to be given to students in that lesson clear up to this point or not just tell me any question about the difference between approach method and technique you see now we begin with something wider that is approach and it is purely theoretical and then we move to something practical which is taken from the approach of course the practices and the applications that are taken from the principles it means the application of these principles uh, and in which we are going to decide the teacher's role the student's role and the role of the material and then we move to the technique which is related to the teacher only what way that the teacher can follow is specifically in a specific lesson and in a specific activity of course we have different activities in a lesson pronunciation grammar uh, passages vocabulary uh, uh, um, uh, paragraph writing for example or writing uh, in general any activity which is related to writing so this is a good introduction just to know about uh, uh, i mean uh, approach method and technique now we are going to begin the first page that we have for our 
uh, chapter that is chapter six i don't know whether this image will be clear to you is it clear to you now is it clear to you can you see can you see this page students yes yes okay. of course you cannot you cannot see everything i'm going to read i'm going to read from the book but uh, you see this is the first page that we have in chapter six i want you just to listen to me carefully and to take notes by the way if you are able uh, to have a paper with you just now because i'm going to read paragraph by paragraph and to explain paragraph by paragraph and what i want you just to follow me carefully so uh, if if you manage just to have a paper with you and just to write some notes that i'm going to emphasize okay now chapter six is entitled communicative language teaching between two brackets clt an alternative starting point for the development of language teaching methods is to view language essentially as a social practice let us begin explaining these things word by word what did we say from the beginning an alternative starting point this is very important what do you mean by alternative alternative means substitute why to say substitute because communicative language teaching as a method it is not the first method we have a method which is coming before so what does it mean it means that communicative language teaching is coming after other methods and that's why we we have the word alternative alternative a starting point what to say alternative starting point it means that in having communicative language teaching we have some sort of correction and modification correction and modification correction or and modification of what of the previous method let us uh, let us have an idea about what are the previous method of course we have a grammar translation method we have direct method and we have audio lingual method these methods have defects you know the word defects defects we have right. mistakes in these methods communicative language teaching is coming to correct these defects these mistakes and that's why we have to say a starting point what does it mean it means that we have to leave other methods and we have to rely on communicative language teaching as an innovative innovative method for the development of language teaching method is to view language okay now let us see what is the philosophy what is the philosophy of this method that is to view language essentially as a social practice this is very 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 important okay what is the philosophy of this method the method believes that language is a social practice and this is very important what to say social practice it means that we cannot learn a language individually there must be a community there must be a society to practice language so here language according to this method is what is a social activity it cannot be done individually it should be done socially there must be a social context in which i'm going to practice the language so if you want to learn a language there must be a society there must be a social context unless we have this we cannot learn a language clear up to this point is there any question shall i repeat please these are very important by the way do not leave things because we are going to emphasize each uh, uh, line that we are going to tackle in this page 
So please ask me before I move if there is any difficulty to understand. Please. So no question, students? No question? No, it is clear. Oh, okay, okay. Let us move to the other point. Okay, so as we said that this method believes that uh, language should be taught uh, according to a social context. And the goal of language teaching teaching is engendering the learner's competence to communicate in the target language. This is very, very important. What is the aim? The aim of this method is just to make the learner able to speak in the target language. That is what. <laughs> it is not to teach uh, uh, language for the sake of teaching. No, teaching language to communicate in the target language. Now, suppose that you are teaching uh, uh, this method and you need students to learn English. What is your aim? Your aim is to make your students speak in the target language. That is what? English. So the goal of language teaching the goal of any teacher, according to this method, is to make students use the target language. This is the aim. Communication is viewed as social interaction. This is very important. Okay. How can we view communication now? What is communication according to this method? How can we define communication according to this method? Communication is what? Is social interaction. What does this mean, social interaction? It means social exchange. That is what? We have a relationship between X and Y. X is asking, Y is responding, and they are exchanging their roles. So, Communication can be achieved through interaction. Through interaction. There must be an interaction. Here, communication can be achieved when somebody is asking and the other is responding. It's, it's just like a form of a dialogue. A dialogue. So in this case, communication can be achieved according to the social interaction and this is very important. What do you mean by social interaction? Social exchange. There must be at least two people. One is a speaker and the other is a listener. And they are exchanging roles. What does it mean? The listener is not always a listener and the speaker is not always a speaker. They can exchange their roles. Clear what does it mean communication? Communication is a social interaction. Okay. Therefore, <clears throat> dynamic and influenced by cultural contexts. Okay, these are very important points. Dynamic and influenced by cultural interaction. Why to say dynamic? You know the word dynamic? Dynamic, it means that it is not fixed. Language cannot be uh, fixed. What does it mean? It means that if we have today's vocabulary, we have, we have some sort of changes. The, the vocabulary that we use it today is different from the vocabulary that we are going to use it tomorrow because language is changing according to the needs of uh, the user. So language, according to this, 
should be considered as something dynamic and changing. It is not fixed. Okay. So if it is if it is changing according to what? According to the cultural context, and this is very important. Why to say the word cultural? Of course, because language is a mirror of uh, 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 of of community uh, uh, the community's culture. When we talk about, for example, English language, uh, uh, English language is the mirror of the British or the American culture. Everything which is changing in the culture will be reflected where in the language. So when we talk about this, we talk about the relationship between language and culture. Language will change according to the changes in the cultural factors. So language in this case is not fixed. It is dynamic and it is affected by the cultural factors. Clear or not? Just tell me. Any question? Okay. Rather than being a fixed linguistic system existing in a vacuum, okay. The nature of social, cultural, and pragmatic features of language is addressed beyond a grammatical and discourse elements in communication. What does it mean? It means that we have, we have linguistic factors and paralinguistic factors affecting uh, uh, teaching language. What does it mean? It means that I'm not uh, behind uh, uh, the grammatical forms that are to be used in a language only. I'm not only behind the vocabulary that, that is used in a specific language. No. I'm behind the situation that I'm going to use the language in. And this is related to something, uh, 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 I mean, uh, has a relationship with the pragmatics and discourse, rather than the, uh, the way that we are focusing on language only. So here we have linguistic and paralinguistic factors that are related to language. So language is not to be considered as uh, uh, structures and vocabulary only, no. We are talking also about the situations, the settings that are, uh, 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 I mean, bounding the use of the language. So we are not considering only language itself. And the factors that are related to speaker, the factors that are related to listener, the setting, the situation, everything that are related to using language in a specific time. Clear or not, just tell me. Okay. Excuse me, yes, Dr. Yes, uh, yes, yes, tell me. You mean by culture context, uh, culture context between, uh, you mean uh, there is uh, exchange between the mother tongue and the target language, culturally? Well, well, uh, right? Abdullah, Abdullah, when we are talking about uh, social uh, uh, factors, we are talking about the factors that are related to speaker, the factors that are related to the listener. What are these factors? The common ground, the, the topic that they are talking about, the situation. Of course, if we, if we are going to take an example, let us take a dialogue, okay? A dialogue, a situation, asking the way, for example. What is asking a way? This is a situation. This situation will limit the type of language that we are going to use, what are the expressions that are used, and is, the, uh, is this expression acceptable by the community or not? Now, if I ask you, Abdullah, if you want just to ask about uh, uh, the way, what you are going to say? Of course, you I'll don't say, say excuse I... me, can you tell me the way to, yeah. for example, this expression, this yeah. expression is not only grammar. This is something related to the language acceptability. That is what the community that, uh, 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 that they use this language 
accept this expression to be used in asking the way. Clear or not? Just tell me, Abdullah. Uh, you mean, uh, doctor, we should lights on common uh, ground? Here, we, uh, uh -huh. you see now, so we are talking about what to be accepted socially. It's not only grammar, it's not only vocabulary, but the acceptability of the expression to be used in communication. For example, yes, yes, uh, for example, in English, in English, if I want just to add, uh, 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 to, to use uh, to use certain expression in certain dialogue, I'm not going to do it myself. I have to know which expression that is suitable to be used in this dialogue. If you want just to go to a restaurant, if you want just to go to, for example, uh, for shopping, okay, there are certain expressions to be used in this situation. So here, when we teach a language, according to this method, it is not only grammar to be considered. It is not only vocabulary to be considered. It is the situation that we use the language to be considered. And what expressions to be accepted by the community to be used in, in such situation. Clear, Abdullah, or not just them? Yes, yes, doctor. So uh, we, uh, yes, not, we can. can not linguistic Islam, factors, Islam only. linguistic and paralinguistic factors. What do you mean by para? Paralinguistic factors, factors that are related to the situation, uh, uh, the situation in which we have a speaker and a listener. Okay. <clears throat> so again, uh, when we are talking about this point, we are talking about linguistic and paralinguistic factors that are affecting communication. That uh, Koji can mean uh, uh, for real life communication in the classroom should be explored. Uh, here, you have to know that the educational, the educational aim behind using this method, communicative language teaching. What is the educational aim? That is to make students able to use language outside the class. I'm going to repeat it once again. The educational aim of teaching communicative language teaching, that is the method, is to make students use the language outside the class. And this is very important. And that's why it is what we call lifelong learning. And this is very important. Lifelong learning. What does it mean? The relationship between the learner and the language does not end in a class, does not end in a lesson. No, it means it is to be, uh, I mean, to be uh, focused on making students able to use the language outside the school. Suppose that I'm, I'm, I'm teaching according to this method, it means that I'm going to make my students able to use the target language when they are outside the school. In other, in other situations, this is the educational aim, and this is what we call life long learning. This is very important. Life long learning. What does it mean? It means that when we are t uh, teaching a language, it means that the relationship between the learner and the language does not end in a lesson. The learner should use the language even when he is in another situation, another, li uh, another life or daily life situation. This is the educational aim, and this is very important. <clears throat> now, here, learners should develop linguistic fluency, not just the accuracy, and this is very important. Do you have an idea about fluency and accuracy? Who can tell me 
any idea about the difference between fluency and accuracy? Any idea? Fluency want... is speak, uh, speak yes. language easily. Yes. How about accuracy? How about accuracy? Okay, let me tell you. Now, when we are talking about fluency and accuracy, you see, these uh, two terms will be different in different methods because certain methods emphasize accuracy rather than fluency. What does it mean, uh, accuracy? It means that using the language perfectly, you know the word perfectly, perfectly, without any mistake, that is what accuracy, that is to use language without any mistake. Fluency, what does it mean? Fluency, to use the language without stopping, even if you committed a mistake. This is the difference. So here for CLT, for communicative language teaching, the aim is to, uh, to, uh, to, to emphasize uh, fluency rather than accuracy. It means that let us the learner speak even if he is doing a mistake. Let him, uh, let, let him speak fluently without stopping him. That is to encourage the fluency rather than the what? The accuracy. We are not going to stop them and say, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. This will be a, a, a psychological factor in which the, the, the student will not speak at all. Because he thinks that whenever he talks, it will be wrong. So in this case, we cannot encourage the fluency. So for CLT, they are saying that, the adopters of, of this method, they are saying that, let the speaker speak even if he is making a mistake. So fluency will be emphasized rather than accuracy. But it doesn't mean that we are going to neglect the mistakes. No, we are going to correct them now and then when they are repeated. So we are not going to neglect uh, accuracy, but we are going to emphasize fluency. Let the speaker uh, talk without stopping. Got the point now? So this is for CLT. They are saying that fluency is more important than accuracy. That is to compare it with, with for example, audiolingual method. For audiolingual method, they are saying no. Accuracy is, uh, is more important than fluency. Here for CLT, no. Fluency is, is more important than accuracy. Any question about this? Any question? Okay. <clears throat> now. Students should be equipped with tools for generating unrehearsed language performance outside the classroom this is very important what does this mean it means that it is required to make a student generate sentences that are not to be said by others this is very important for communicative language teaching what is the aim the aim is just to make students formulate utterances that are never said before their own genuine, uh, uh, I mean, utterances. I mean, students are not going to repeat what is said by the teacher, no. They should use the language to express their own personal ideas and thoughts. These, uh, these are, let me say, uh, what is required from a learner according to communicative language teaching. According to this method, the learner should speak what, uh, what he thinks, what he, uh, I mean, what, 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 
uh, really expresses his own personal ideas. So uh, their, their language should be genuine. What does it mean genuine? Their own language, not the language to be repeated by uh, 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 I mean, by the by, the teacher and the students will be repeat, repeating what the teacher is saying. We don't have repetition here. We have uh, creativity, and this is very important. That is, students are creative. Each student will will be given a chance to express his personal ideas, his personal thoughts using the target language. <clears throat> Lifelong language learning among students should be facilitated. Learners uh, are seen as partners in cooperative venture. And this is very important. You have to know that according to this method, language cannot be individual. What does it mean? We have pair work. We have a group work, and these are very important. What do you mean by pair work? That is, we are going to, to design an activity in which we have two students to do it. For example, a dialogue. The dialogue will be done by two students, not uh, by the individual student. So here, this is what we call pair work. And then we have a group work. What does it mean, group, uh, group work? We divide uh, the class into groups. For example, group A, group B, group C, group D. And each group will have an activity to be done together. What does it mean? The, the activity will be done in a group, not individually. For example, we have, we have a passage. And we have uh, this activity in a lesson, and the students are required to answer the questions. So we are going to divide the, the, the class into group. Group A will answer question number one. Group B will, uh, will answer uh, question number two. Group C will answer uh, question number three. And these, these uh, answers, how, how can be formulated? The group itself will discuss well, what is the correct answer? And there is a representative of the group will tell the answer. The representative of group A will answer the, the question one. And the representative of, of group B will, will uh, answer uh, the, the, the question number two, and so forth. And in this case, what do we have? We have a group work, not individual work. So here, the activities to be done according to uh, this method is to be done through pair work, through group work. <clears throat> the most obvious characteristic of CLT are the most everything that is uh, done with communicative intents. Okay. What does it mean, communicative intent? And th uh, this, this is very important. When we say communicative intent, it means that uh, as a learner, I cannot do something individually. There must be, there must be a, a feeling of what? Of a community. I have to be a member of a community to, to do an activity. So there must be a communicative intent. What does it mean? A desire to be a member of a community. Here, students are not to be looked as individuals, no, as members of community. If I ask a student, to which, to which, uh, to, to which group you belong, you say, I'm, I'm in group A. And uh, how about the other student, I'm in group B. So what does it mean? There is a desire to be a member in a community. This desire to be created by the teacher. The teacher should create this desire on the part of learners. How? Because this, the teacher from the beginning, he will divide his class into groups. And to make students uh, feel that they are members of the groups rather than to be individual. Any question about, about uh, communicative intent? 
communicative intent means the desire to belong to a group, to a community in a class. <clears throat> Uh, uh, by, the, uh, by the way, do you feel tired? Do you feel exhausted? Do you think that we can, we can do more or not? Just tell me. Students, is it okay to continue or just to stop at this point? Students? No, okay. Any, uh, any students who have uh, any question about the material? By the way, by the way, you see now each word, each expression that I explain will be required in the exam. Got the point now? So uh, what I want you just to what? Once we finish the lecture, you go back to the recording and to listen carefully and then to take notes each point that I say, definition, explanation, comparison, all these are required. And by the way, you have to know that for the coming lecture, I'm going to start asking you orally about what I said today. So you, for the coming lecture, I'm going to start reviewing what we have before go, uh, going to the new material. And I'm going to ask you by names. So I need full understanding, full understanding. And if you have any question, please do not hesitate to write in the class. Say, for example, this point, it is not understood. This point, we need to be explained more. This point, we need an example. And you have to know that this material, this material needs some sort of application. What does it mean? It, does, it, it doesn't mean that we are going to have only something theoretical. We are going to have videos in which we are going to have, have a real class and we are going to explain these things practically. How, how, can, how can it be done in a class? We are going to have videos from YouTube in which we are going to have a, a, a real lesson and we have a teacher and we have students and let us see what... What, what, what are things to be done inside a class? And these things will be very clear to you if we are going to have videos. Because here, teaching is something practical. It is not something theoretical to be, to be explained only. You got the point now? So for, for the coming lectures, I'm going to provide you with videos. I'm going to show you certain videos in which we have a teacher, students, and we have, uh, we have a, mater a material to be given and how, how things to be done inside a class, how to, be ha uh, how how to have pair work, how to have uh, group work, all these things would be provided for the coming lectures. But what I need you now just to, uh, to, to consider each expression, each term that I explain, this is one. Second, you have to have the book with you. Of course, it is impractical to listen only. You have to have the book with you to read it once again and to listen to the lecture uh, while you are reading the book. Because you see now uh, the, the terms, the, uh, we, have, we have scientific terms, we have definitions, we have comparison. All these things are available in the book. Unless you have the book with you, you can...